so the car is well balanced. Uh, you know, I grew up driving front wheel drive cars, so driving a front engine rear wheel drive car is actually can, pretty neat because it's it drives more from the center um, than always off the front. I'm not sure exactly how to describe that, but does it have like a different a good balance rotation? to it? It does. So the, the setup in the car right now, it has uh, some good rotation, but I have a bigger tire in the rear, 225 in the rear, and only a 205 in the front. Um, I like to set up the car, you know, for street driving with a little bit of uh, understeer, <laughs> so the front will give out before the rear does, and uh, I think that just adds to this. I'm not always having to stay on top of it. Like you can drive more at the limit, and the limit is more forgiving, and then so I tend to drive a little bit more at that, um, at that level, and and it's just a little bit more fun instead of having a, a high level of consequence if the car wants to come around. But like something at like seven or eight tenths is still pretty fun. Street driving, I like to have some margin. Um, it's a very different setup for me than on the track. And uh, that's why I like that analog feel and being able to hear the engine and you know, maybe it's not perfect over the bumps, but like I kind of like the car a little bit soft too. Um, it just adds to like that, that feel going around the track. So. Like, I wouldn't call this a fast car, but compared to modern standards, but driving a more analog car on still like normal, you know, summer tires and stuff like that, not our compound or anything, you don't have to go super fast to have fun. So the idea is to have a, like a slower car and drive it like what feels faster and you're not doing 120 miles an hour on the street. Exactly, and that's the same vibe that I get when I drive my FRS. It's like people complain it's slow, but they just don't drive it right. They don't enjoy it in the way that it really is what it is, and you have to just enjoy it as it is, understand that, and have your fun with it. And if you can have your fun with it, then that's part of what makes it cool, kind of, you know? Yeah, and it's a change from, you know, what I normally drive day-to-day -day in commuter traffic or whatever. So. so what's your daily driver, then, in contrast to the Celica? I just have an electric car that I drive around is the road. Totally so, different. Yeah, totally different. Night uh, and day. But if I'm the 405 in traffic, then I think the electric car is a good thing to have. Um, the manual and everything in traffic just kind of sucks. Oh, yeah. I know all about that. I used to commute a lot, but that's very cool. So what made you go from the front-wheel drive scene to more, one of the more esoteric Toyotas, because there's not a lot of people here in LA who have these cars, and even fewer who have 18RG swaps. So what was really the driving factor of, of buying this car and building it up to this level? Yeah, you know, I wanted a, a hot rod car, and nowadays um, it's difficult to upgrade cars and keep them all California legal. So this is a 1972 car yeah. and pre-75. So uh, these already came with carburetors and stuff on them. And so you can hot rod this thing out and uh, have no problem registering it and, and uh, yeah, and not having to worry about getting any kind of tickets. You can actually use it, enjoy it, and have your own personal fun with it then, yeah, right? exactly. So do you have anything done in the suspension? Yeah, so this has uh, K, uh, it has Techno Toy Tuning front strut assembly. That's originally for a, a 86 Corolla. Um, so, you know, Hachiroker A86 front suspension on it. And then uh, I have a rear shock assembly, coilover assembly from them as well. Um, the, this is front stock front sway bar. And it actually has no sway bar in the rear. And uh, like a little bit better balance, a little bit better handling then. It's just a stock sway bar setup and it seems to run fine uh, for the road and, you know, relatively lower traction conditions with just a normal, you know, normal 200 treadwear tire. It feels like a good setup. So in 1975-ish, I think, 76-ish, like for a couple years, that was like the hot rod Celica in Japan was the GT or GTV and it had dual 44 or dual 40 millimeter Makunis on it, this engine and like basically no smog stuff or anything. Yeah. Okay. And then like right after that, is like in the mid 70s, 77 is when they started adding all the smog stuff. Right. And then like they made 10 horsepower worse, like less every year for a little while. <laughs> so the numbers have got to be super low. I mean, they were like these engines. Like they, just engines. So when they first came out, they claimed 145 PS. Oh, sorry. It, uh, production numbers. Not like, oh, uh, not, not, uh, not, uh, not horsepower. I think so. I think so. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, but, I guess. but 
But generally, like over the years, there was a lot of them because later oh, on, really? they put fuel injection on them. Oh, and okay. so there's like four different like cylinder heads for these, and like four different cams. Oh, and, wow. like, okay. Because they they ran a, they were there. So it's a long production life, but of like different versions of it, like with more and more smog stuff, and then fuel injection, which was I guess pretty poor, and then. Uh, yeah. So is this an engine that you backdated some? Like, is it one, an engine with had, that had smog items on it, and you backdated it to make more power? Or is it like so? I bought the car anyway? like this. Oh, okay. I just sort of okay. rebuilt it. Oh, but wow. that's what the guy who built the car. Yeah, he. This is so a U.S. car, obviously. Oh yeah. And then he imported the engine and then uh, built it. So this has um, TRD pistons that they used to sell back in the like late '80s or early oh, wow. '90s. Okay. Um, like a light and crank and uh, what else? A ported head, HKS cam. So HKS used to make parts for these cars, you know, yeah. 30 years ago yeah. or more. They had, a, they had a turbo setup. HKS had a turbo setup for these too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No. It was like a blow through it was only for the carburetor. RG. Oh no, it yeah. was a fill inject. It was. Uh, I think it was a carb. I don't know. It might have been a later EFI. It's been a long time, yeah. but I know that I have seen an HKS setup on an RG. But T T R D back in the you know seventies eighties they used to race these a bunch so they had like short ratio gear ratio short ratio oh, gears for them sweet. and uh, yeah all kinds of stuff. But finding those parts now has got to be and they're not even that good compared to stuff nowadays that you could buy. So I'm planning to build another engine <laughs> oh, I was up for this with more modern like longer rod, shorter piston. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, still keep the carburetor. So like stuff a short stroke. RG then? No, it's a it's oh. the same stroke, but same you go stroke. a long rod. Okay. So back in the days, if you look at an old piston, they're really tall, yeah. and the pin is relatively low, uh, which makes a, a shorter rod. And so there's a rod ratio between the crankshaft stroke and the length of the rod. And what you're looking for is generally a, a longer rod, which will give you a little bit more dwell at top dead center and bottom dead center. Oh, really? So yeah. it changes actually like the, the timing of the piston motion. Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. Imagine having like, uh, yeah. So it, it changes the piston motion. And yeah. then you can use a lighter weight, more modern piston with more modern alloy, um, good ring pack, all that kind of stuff. And then you lighten the whole rotating assembly doing that. It'll have better combustion. Like you just end up building a better engine. So the higher dwell time, like why? Um, why, like, why is that advantageous? Is it you just get like more energy out of it because you're keeping that volume smaller for longer? Like what? Yeah, that's a good the, question. Is it better combustion from having it up there higher at TDC? So there's a couple things that happen. One, which doesn't have to do with combustion. With the longer rod, there's less uh, side load on the piston. Oh, right. Yeah. So you're not like kind of running it into the wall. And, like, yep. Okay. And uh, but that was a big issue back in the days. They didn't really know how to shape the pistons. So they would knock and stuff like that. So they put really big skirts on them. So the pistons in here are really tall with a big skirt. So they're not real loud and they don't rock so much. But nowadays they've figured out how to make pistons a lot shorter with the pin higher. Is it, and that's like tolerancing. Is that tolerancing? Tolerance, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the, uh, I think when you, it, which also helps to have ring seal if the pistons not uh, sort of twisting a lot. Uh, yeah. As far as the exactly why. It's better to have the um, the longer rod with combustion. I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. I don't I, want to quote something. Yeah. I don't want to say something. I'm not copyright. Are you? Are you Stephen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, nice to meet you. That's really cool, Michael. Nice to meet you, I moved. We just, or my wife and I moved here like a couple of years ago, and it's like it still blows my mind. Like the SoCal car scene is crazy because you meet people like yourself or like. Like uh, Eric Sue, you know, I'm like buying some seat rails off him, you know, like next. I think I saw Matt Farah parked on the yeah, side of the road Farrah, on the way up. Like, yeah, it's just like this is Magnus Walker ridiculous. was here last Friday. Yeah, he was here today. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so it's I, that's just really cool. Mixing it up. What's up, man? Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Good. I thought I was getting up here too late and everybody would be gone, but clearly. Not a lot of people have stuff to do today. Yeah. <laughs> what is like a new weekend? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so this thing's been fun, like kind of getting it reliable For to sure. where I can go up here and, and, and beat on it a bit. So I just went through the transmission again and changed a bunch of the bearings in it. Um, and I keep having a, a like an oil pan leak, so I've been trying to fix that. Seems okay. 
I put a shorter final drive in it, a 4.3 final drive in it. That's um, got to be fun. Yeah. Is it a five speed? Five speed. Yeah. It's the same transmission that came in like the Toyota pickup trucks in like the early 80s. The, the W series. W50. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which they still, you can get some parts for bearings and seals, but you can't get like gears and stuff like that. But I've changed the synchros in it, I've changed the bearings in it, I've changed the seals in it. Uh, most of the stuff you can get off for this car, not a lot of factory stuff, but like Rock Auto has even a bunch of so a bunch of the cars from the 70s they had like it was they didn't use a cable it'd be like a rod yeah to like another rod yeah, to like something yeah, yeah. that pivoted Correct. off the firewall right right like yeah. the old z's all had that on the l series right? yeah so this car came with no linkage the guy had sold it at some uh, point or someone borrowed it so i had to this is just like um low car cable from summit racing yeah, or something. yeah. okay and then uh what did i do i think i drilled this and then fabricated the brackets okay 